Well, folks, I'm going to show you my very first PDA. This is a Palm M105 that uh, I, through some bartering, I got from a friend of mine back in, I believe it was the summer of 2001. Brand new in the box, still shrink wrapped. He got it with his Dell. He bought a new Dell. Uh, I think it was a Dimension or something like that. And it came with a uh, nice little PDA. So, because he was more of a handspring guy, I said, hey, I could use one of those. And at the time, I was in 11th grade. No, 10th grade. I was in 10th grade back then. And, well, long story short, I got this thing and uh, brought it home. Strapped it to the back of my bicycle rack, and I rode it six miles home. So we're gonna open it up and take a look at what's inside. Now, unfortunately, the cradle is long gone. Never to be seen again. But here it is, the PDA itself. Uh, this thing has seen moderate use. I used to run a fellow screen protector on it, which helped make writing on it a little bit easier. This uses the original version of Graffiti, which I learned and when Graffiti 2 came out, I forgot, I couldn't actually use any of it because it wasn't what I expected. Still have the original software. There's a CD in here somewhere. Yep, yeah, there it is. The original manual and accessory guide. I'm going to go on eBay and I'm going to get another cradle for it because I kind of want to keep it, you know, original. It's not worth anything. I mean, this, this actually technically is worth uh, less than the pocket change in my pocket right now. But here's the accessories catalog and all the wonderful goodies that you can get for it. Um, I did try one of these keyboards. I didn't like it. It was, it was too funky. I, hard to use. I did buy a custom cover for it. I actually had this Carbon Tech cover. But there were some pretty cool ones. This is back in the era when you could basically accessorize anything um, cheaply. Like your face, replacement faceplates for electronic devices were were really big business at the time, and that was uh, that was no different for the Palm PDAs. The M105 is a slight upgrade from the M100. Uh, I believe it offered more memory and a dock. Uh, port, docking port, which or something like that. It was something the M100 did not have. I don't remember exactly what, but here's the, the docking port. You can see it. Kind of crude. The replacement cover that I had for it is long gone. I did have an aftermarket leather case for it. Sort of like this one. Because it was my goal to use it as a wallet, and that never materialized. Here we go, the zippered case. I actually had two. I had a body glove cover for it, too, that I used. But you can actually get a USB adapter for the serial sync cable. Here's the individual cable you could get for it. I never bought any of that. That's what the cradle looks like. I still have one stylus. It is the original stylus. I never lost it. But I did buy a couple of replacement styli, just in case I lost one of them. Instruction manual. Back when you could get instruction manuals with your devices. In fact, I think I still have some unused graffiti stickers. I only used one of them. That's still in here. Registration, never filled that out, never sent it in. Palm protection plan. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can power it up. I don't think I have any triple A's here, do I? I should get some. Okay, so we've uh, found some triple A's. I'm going to go ahead and pull the stylus out. Now, I'll tell you a story about this one. I used this in high school to take notes. And I was so good at graffiti that I could write pretty much as the teacher was speaking. I was very good with graffiti at the time. Um, 
not so much anymore. I haven't used this thing in, uh, well, since 2003 when I graduated. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and run the startup procedure. I just put a nice set of batteries in there. Tap anywhere to continue. The first thing you do is calibrate the, uh, the digitizer by tapping the center of each target. At one point, I did use this as a checkbook, and uh, I've got to say it was pretty nice. Um, I actually went on and bought the checkbook software, and uh, used it for quite a while before I just got sick of it. So now we've set the time. Now let's set the date. Now I'm going to show you once again that the Palm Pilots will work up until 2020... I think it's 26. No. 31. 2031. And that will be D-Day for anyone who still uses a Palm. Which will be no one. I mean, why would you use a Palm then, you know? Anyway, July... Today is July 18th. And uh, hit next. Done. One of the applications that I downloaded for this was Left Hack. And because I'm left handed, it puts all of the scroll bars on the left hand side. That hack does not work on anything newer than I think Palm, whatever the current, the last version of Palm Soft, Palm OS, it wouldn't work. Because um, I, I had bought a new. Uh, tungsten E2, and I did not have the ability to use the left-handed scroll bar function, which really kind of limited my use of the machine. I, by having him on the left-hand side, it just makes it so much easier to use the device, but Palm didn't really think that was important, so anyway. Back in those days, in like 2002-ish, there was a website called PDA Street, and um, had a great forum for Palm users and uh, was a great resource for software, but that website is no longer uh, what it was. I think it's basically an advertisement parking site for all I... From last, I last I went there, it was not again, the community that it used to be. So, here we go. We're on the home screen, which anyone who's used a Palm is familiar with. Um, if you swipe the screen from Top to, from bottom to top, it brings up the graffiti cheat sheet, which is uh, very handy. But what I did is I changed this to um, to launch the backlight. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'll be honest. When I used this in high school, when I the, the high school that I originally attended from grades nine through. 11 um, was a very technology oriented high school in a very wealthy town where almost everyone had some portable electronic device be it a cell phone yes even back then <laughs> we had cell phones um, it was po it was common for you know for teenagers to have them um, but you had if it wasn't a cell phone it was a laptop if it wasn't a laptop it was a PDA if it wasn't a PDA it was a it was a game boy and um, I was known for carrying around vintage laptops. I used to use, you know, two eighty sixes, you know, in an, in an era when people were carrying around Pentium threes, you know, in their in their uh, backpack. So I was ridiculed for that, but never in a bad way. Uh, so I got this, and I started using this to, to do note taking and such, and um, it was it was perfectly okay and allowed. Now. In 12th grade, my parents decided to move the next town over, which is not a wealthy community, and the high school was more of a traditional high school where people did all their work on pen and paper because the students couldn't afford, or their parents couldn't afford computers. And here I was, my first day in health class, I sat down wearing a button-down shirt and slacks, and I pulled this thing out, and immediately... I was ridiculed in a bad way. <laughs> it was 
it was a very enlightening experience. Um, you know, I go from basically, uh, you know, wealthy high school where everybody has technology to this, um, to an average high school where nobody has technology or it's very rare to have it. Um, I was immediately dubbed the rich kid or whatever and, you know, anyway. And to make matters worse, when I bought my first car, I bought a, uh, a bay, um, what was it? It was a maroon Mazda 626 with beige leather interior. Um, I wasn't well liked in that high school for obvious reasons. Anyway, so this thing, this little device was the object of ridicule for me. Um, it was akin to having a retainer or a headgear or something. And Anyway, I didn't care. I still used it. I just did my thing and they did theirs. But anyway, so let's go ahead and change this uh, this button thing here. This allows you to change the function that the, that the stylus performs when you, when you swipe the screen from bottom to top. If I set it to backlight and bring it back home, boom, it launches the backlight. Now the cool thing about the, the early backlights, they're very hard to read with a camera, but if you notice, only the pixels are backlit. I still haven't figured out how Paul managed to do that without illuminating the background like most backlights do and uh, I'm, I'm still haven't figured out how exactly they did that or how it works but it works and that's all that matters so we have no software in here other than the default software I'm gonna turn the backlight off there and uh, let's see we've got the memo pad which is what I took all my notes in See, I just wrote hey -o. The L is... Yeah, there we go. Sharp L, there we go. Hello. There we go. Perfect. And let's see if I can write like I used to. Ooh, oops. Oops. And of course, you get your numeric pad. No, oh, typo. No, that was right. Nope. It is cumbersome once you get used to it. I'm trying to do a Y here. There we go. Oops. There you go. So, and that's that. And of course, you got your clock. Now, one of the functions that the M105 had that uh, some of the others did not, because the original face cover to this, which was actually a little fold down panel, and I think I can show you, it might be in one of these manuals, because that had an opening for to show the clock. If you press the up arrow, I'm going to try to find a picture of it. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. It was in the accessory book. Oh, here. This is kind of what it would look like, and you had a little opening where it would display time. And when the cover was folded down, it exposed one of the buttons and when you press the button it would turn it on so what we're going to do is turn it off I'm going to press the up arrow and it shows the time only briefly that way you could whip it out of your pocket press the button see the time and date and put it back away so in that without actually powering it on completely one of the other downfalls to this model is if you remove the batteries for more than about four seconds it erases all the memory so it's important to synchronize it before you remove the batteries so you don't lose any data and that's all the time we have for now I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and uh, once I get a docking cradle 
I'm going to try to see what machines I can link it to. I'd like to get it to work in Windows 3.1. In fact, let's take a look at the box and see what it requires so I know what I'm looking for here. Um, here we go. 46 or higher running 95 or higher. Power PC 753 or later. USB or serial. So I guess that's not going to happen. Well, hey, it was worth a shot, right? Well, until then.